Welcome to this uh, problem 980, which is the unique pass 3 problem on lead code. It is labeled hard, uh, but uh, this problem is not that hard, as hard as one would you know want to think. It's a very straightforward problem if you try to understand it. So before this, uh, there, is, there are two problems before this, which, which are like unique path 1 and unique path 2. Both of those problems actually build up to this problem. But uh, if you have solved unique part 2, this would actually seem to be very similar to unique part 2, but it is actually not. It is a little bit on the different side of it. But still, you know, the prerequisite of the two problems which you have solved is required to attempt this problem and it is, a, it is highly necessary, right? So uh, let's you know, look at the problem statement. So we're given a two-dimensional grid uh, in which there are like four types of squares. The first square is the starting square. Um, there is one starting square, the two would, you know, in the grid would represent the ending square. There are, there is exactly one ending square. Zero is where you can walk over and minus one is obstacles which you cannot walk over. Right. So what we need to return is all the four dimensional, uh, you know, four directional walks from the starting square to the ending square so that the walk, you know, walk over every non-obstacle square, like we walk over every non-obstacle square is exactly once. So there is a very important catch that we need to walk over every non-obstacle square exactly once. So that actually makes the problem easy and difficult both in the same line because we need to make sure that we have walked through all the points and we also need to make sure that um, you know the, the basically it's only once so you know the easy part is that we cannot go back and the tough part is that we have to ensure that uh, you know we have walked on all the points all the points so uh, to actually you know first looking at this problem uh, we are actually trying to do solving this in c++ so let's have a variable m, which would be like, uh, which would store the rows. So which would be like grid dot size of another variable n. I have this, you know, variable naming convention, which is, uh, you know, m and n, but you can have whatever you want to name. Come on, dot size. Yes. So, you know, this is just the, uh, the grid. So we would also need some uh, other variables, which would be global variables and should be useful. And uh, those would be like, the, you know, the int start x, int start y, right? The starting x and y, the end x, the end y, right? Uh, the answer, right? Why not? The answer, which would be the number of paths which we find. And um, yeah, we'll need more. We'll, you know, find them. So typically this is the grid size. So what we would want to do is you would want to do a DFS over this entire grid and be, uh, you would not actually go over where there is minus one, where there is an obstacle and we would want to, you know, DFS from the point where we start to the point where we end. And if, you know, we are able to successfully do a DFS along with that, we'll keep a uh, counter of, you know, the, you know, the, the, square, the squares which we took. And if that counter, uh, you know, matches and if you are able to complete a DFS, we'll increase the pointer by one. And we, when, when, when we do, you know, call DFS recursively, we'll be able to get the, the and we'll be able to count how many successful times we have actually completed the DFS successfully. And that will be our answer, right? So it's a very straightforward problem. Uh, so let's, uh, let's actually iterate through the, uh, let's actually iterate through the array and, uh, you know, first determine the starting and the ending positions. Um, there should be another variable, which would be, uh, you know, let's say path select or, you know, path SE, which would be like the number of, uh, you know, which, which which actually would want to count how many, you know, how many squares there are, how many squares basically we would want to go over. So how many unit, like squares we would want to actually cover. So that will be the count variable. So basically, first of all, what we know is that we would want to, you know, the entire grid is our territory, which we would want to uniquely cover. Uh, so let's initialize that here. Okay, you know, for this, now let's initialize J. Um, we'll have J++. You know, for all of this, what we would want, we would want uh, one important thing. If, um, if you know, the uh, area we are looking at, if that is one, so basically if uh, grid of IJ is equal to equal to one. Basically, then we have to update our starting uh, indexes. Like then we know that, you know, the start x is equal to i, start y, you know, 
So this is a very very important habit in computer recordings to have these private variables. It will uh, you know save a lot of your time and will help you debug a lot of code. If this is equal to equal to two, then we know where we have ended. Uh, basically, index is i and y is j. So basically, we have determined the ending points, and uh, you know we now would want to look at the um, we know wherever there is this minus one. So basically, if grid of i j is minus one, then we would decrement the number of you know the points. We would de decrement the path select. Because these are these are the points which we don't want to walk over, right? These are the points which we don't want to cover. Rest all the points we would want to cover, right? So we are out of this for loop. So we have done this. So what we would want to do is we would want to do a DFS. So let's have a DFS uh, method, which we would write. Um, so what would that DFS return? The DFS would return nearly nothing. You know, DFS. What would that DFS take into? Uh, you know, consideration that DFS would take into this grid. The DFS will actually take into consideration this grid. Uh, the DFS will take into consideration the start index. You know, it would consider it. Uh, you take into consideration the ending index, and it will also consider the number of, uh, you know, the path select. So the number of paths. Let's not confuse the variable names. So basically, what we would want to look at is we would want to. Uh, say that uh, we would want to keep a track of the number of the paths. So you know if. If in any way we are overflowing, so which is like if you know we are trying to if you know if, if i is becoming negative or uh, and let's have these um, you know m and n here so in in them in so we can you know globally access them. Let's remove the int here so that you know we can globally access them. So if this is uh, if or if i is like greater than equal to m, you know greater than equal to m. Uh, or we are trying to overflow j, like underflow j, or if you're trying to uh, overflow j, uh, overflow j, or if we are trying to step on an obstacle, we would not want to do that. So we would want to say that if grid of ij is uh, minus one, then we would simply return. Right, we don't want this, right? So all the edge cases considered, we would want to return from the DFS. Um, now, what are the other cases, right? Now, let's say we have got the, uh, you know, the end result. So basically, if I know that uh, my i is equal to end, uh, you know, if, if I know that my i is equal to, so basically, let's have the answer to be zero. First of all, there are no parts. If I want to know, basically, if my i is like end x, and um, if j is so basically if we are at the end right if we are at the end um, we would and uh, you know we have the, the number of paths equal to the path c like the required path so basically if we are at the end and we have also traversed the, all the points which are already required then what we do is we increment the answer and we return and that is what we do now the entire the actual dfs part at this point of time so what we do is once we have actually covered that path we we say that the grid of ij is actually minus one so we have actually seen this right and uh, so basically we have actually seen this and then we would want to say dfs of uh, dfs of we would want to return the dfs of uh, you know i j plus one so basically the going in the right uh, sorry grid i comma j plus one so basically all the paths from the right increase the path by one because you have seen this point then we would want to have dfs of grid which is the grid here we would want to go to the you know we would want to want to go up um, we would want to go up plus one we would uh, want to go left okay we would want to go left so that will be like j minus one so we would want to go left we would uh, you know sorry path plus one plus one we would want to go left we would want to uh, 
go down now. So basically, basically that will be like i minus one j that is down. Uh, I minus one, I minus one j that is down. We would want to increase the path because we saw the path, and right? so we've gone up, down, up, down. That's the thing. So basically, here we are. We will call you know. After we know this, so basically the answer will be incremented, and uh, what we have done is now we would want to call DFS from where. So basically, we would want to call DFS from this grid which you are talking about. You would want to call. Uh, we would want to call it at start x. We would want to call it at start x like, and like the y axis is like start and y start y. And the you know the path right now is like we have seen this one point and you know the path SC is what this thing actually defines. And the final answer of this question would be the answer, right? Whatever the number of paths that are there. Yeah, we'll debug if it's needed because of course running code for the first attempt is a very Fatal error, you know, void DFS. There is no okay. Let's look what is the definition error. Okay, sorry, we put a comma here. Cool. So, never the code will ever, never, ever run in the first iteration because if it runs, then we have done something wrong. Okay, it's a wrong answer. No problem. So, let, yes, let's see where is the issue. Right, let's see where is the issue. Yeah, the parts and everything are pretty good. Uh, looking at the DFS function. Hmm, I think the, oh, the end should not be here because we are not actually looking at modifying the original grid, changing the obstacles here. We are taking a copy of the grid, so the end should be not there. Let's see what else, what else. Uh, what else? I think the int. Yeah, because we it's a global variable, we cannot redefine it. Ah, uh, stupid. Let's run this code and see. Accepted. Let's submit this. Accepted. Tada! Awesome. Right. Thank you. So this was a simple problem. We solved it using DFS, and I think that is one of the good. That's a good solution, though it was not fast because you know I wrote everything down. You can make this much more efficient uh, if you make you know efficient use of the you know this memorization part. But this is a uh, this is a decent, easy, uh, and you know this entire thing you should not actually iterate toward the elements. The speed is actually compromised. But at uh, at a ground level, this is a very very fine solution if you give this to an interviewer this is the perfect solution it is accepted it passed all the test cases thank you so much bye bye